House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is standing behind her decision to move forward with an impeachment inquiry against President Trump. Saturday, during an interview with the Texas Tribune, Pelosi argued that holding the president accountable was, quote, more important than politics. Those statements come 24 hours after the three House committees subpoenaed Secretary of State Mike Pompeo for documents related to Ukraine and reporting by The New York Times alleging that President Trump is trying to rally back or is trying to is trying to rally back during an impeachment inquiry. Here to weigh in on all of this via Skype is host of The Michael Brooks Show, Mr. Michael Brooks, friend of the show. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And it's great to be with you guys, as always. Absolutely. I mean, let's begin off with impeachment, and it's particularly on this Ukraine matter. Michael, do you think that this rises to the level of what Democrats—I mean, this is their sole focus. That's what Speaker Pelosi has said. Is that the right tactic to, to use against the president? So there's two questions, right? I would say technically, yes, it does rise. And, you know, I, for all of my criticism of Democratic, like— you know, they're sort of like smelling salts, wet West Wing politics, right? Like things like this, I think, are actually relatively widespread. I think it is also important to sort of keep in mind that if Republicans got a Democratic president on a wiretap, you know, doing something like this, they would be trying to send them to Guantanamo Bay. So let's be real. <laughs> now, on, in terms of the second part, of course, it's foolish to limit it to Ukraine. And I'm continually kind of mind blown by democratic leadership. I mean, it's one thing to have obvious ideological differences, like someone like me, I'm a socialist man. I'm not Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden, but you would think that they would want to win. And the idea that a fundamentally political exercise like impeachment, he's not gonna get removed from office. The idea is mobilize and uh, use up all of their time and embarrass them and punch them daily. So let's keep it to one technical thing that I think, frankly, it, it's legitimate to investigate, but it's not going to have that much oomph with the American people at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one thing that Sagar and I have talked about is remembering the bar that the Democratic Party already set. I mean, George W. Bush lied us into war that cost thousands of our own men and women's lives, not to mention Iraqis' lives, not to mention tons of money, not to mention spun out ISIS, not to mention committing acts of torture in our name. And we didn't even fully investigate the Bush administration, let alone move forward with impeachment. So that bar also exists out there. But th there's another news item I wanted to get your take on this morning, Mike which is that, um, of course, Biden is sort of caught up in this whole Ukraine story because it revolves around his role as vice president while his son was sitting on the board of Ukrainian energy company. Now, some of what the president and Giuliani talk about here is speculative at best, conspiracy theory at worst. But the fact does remain that Hunter Biden was sitting on the board of Ukrainian energy company making 50K a month while Biden was vice president. Not a great look. So while all of that is going on, the Biden campaign has sent a letter to major news networks and prominent anchors demanding that they not book Rudy Giuliani anymore. And specifically, they say, rewrite to demand that in service to the facts, you no longer book Rudy Giuliani, a surrogate for Donald Trump, who has demonstrated that he willing, will knowingly and willingly lie in order to advance his own narrative. Your thoughts, sir? <laughs> Well, it personally offends me because I love doing impressions of Rudy Giuliani on these shows. Uh, he's losing his mind and there's an entertainment value to it. Uh, but <laughs> beyond that, more seriously, this is absolutely the replay, right, of the Hillary Clinton dynamic, which is that, yes, the actual structure of what Trump and the Republican press and certainly what Rudy Giuliani is pushing is a lie, okay, in terms of this prosecutor being fired story. It is a conspiracy theory. However, the reality is, is that yes, this kid's on the board for 50, you know, grand, right? Why? You know, I, and everybody knows the answer to that. And this is in fact the swamp thing. And this, and I already could see the moment, you know, Trump on the debate stage, like return to normal, return to normal. Like when your son was at Ukraine, you know, right. like I don't want that normal Joe. And then all of the liberals and everybody will, will correctly point out, but impotently, that of course, like the Trump administration is like up beyond its eyeballs in this, you know, things that are much worse, right? That's true. And that needs to be pointed out, but it needs to be pointed out by somebody that has clean hands, frankly, mm -hmm. uh, because the reality is, is that, it, you know, it, it does reveal these bigger structural problems. And that's what Trump did in his own ridiculous way in 2016. He pointed out some things that were 100% true. Also, you know, as far as Giuliani, I mean, look, 
yes, Giuliani's lying all the time on TV. He's unhinged. But there is like a strength projection question here. And Joe Biden can barely make it through debates. So why not instead of coming out and saying like, hey, you know, don't lie about me, man, or whatever, or ignoring it. Why would you send this like yeah. kind of snitchy, like, you know, go to the teacher kind of letter? And I got to <laughs> say, very really, it's, it's, it's very me. So it's weak. A, yeah, no, you're right, Michael. It's very me. It's like a mealy mouth letter from the from the campaign, and and you know these people, the people who sent this are seasoned comms professionals. They should know better. To your point, by the way, we actually have a uh, we actually have some sound from the president and the latest ad uh, from the Trump campaign about this Ukraine uh, situation. Let's take a listen to that. Joe Biden promised Ukraine a billion dollars if they fired the prosecutor investigating his son's company. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch, <laughs> got fired. But when President Trump asks Ukraine to investigate corruption, the Democrats want to impeach him, and their media lapdogs fall in line. They lost the election. Now they want to steal this one. Don't let them. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. I mean, <laughs> to, to, your, to your point, Michael, there it is. I mean, this is what we're going to hear about all the way to the end. And it was just like the Clinton Foundation, right? Where like there was obvious impropriety about what was happening. And everyone was saying, oh, let's just brush it off. It's not something that we should ever talk about. And your point, I think, is that like, well, why nominate somebody with all of these problems in the first place? A hundred percent. And that's yeah. the mashup, right? The Clinton Foundation. Yes, there was a lot of there was Uranium One and debunked right. stories about the Clinton administration. A hundred percent. And people ran with it and the Trump people lied about it completely. And then at the same time, like, you know, uh, the Clintons did have just even as what one of several examples, this just obscene record in Haiti as an example, right? Mm -hmm. That raised all sorts of really serious questions. I mean, not even raised questions, they provided answers too. So why do we wanna do this again is exactly the point. And that ad is it. It's gonna be a mashup, there's gonna be grievance, there's gonna be conspiracy theory, uh, but it's gonna start on the foundation that why is this kid, and I keep saying kid, even though he's in his 40s because <laughs> he's Joe Biden's kid. So yeah. I'm gonna, I take it you do not believe Hunter yeah. Biden was on the board because of his intense expertise in yeah. Ukrainian and gas and energy. Let me, Got it. Let me tell you something. If that is the metric, I am up and available for energy analysis and <laughs> board advising <laughs> in the Emirates, in Ukraine, yeah. wherever. Right. I'll still do my podcast, but I'll have an <laughs> intense in interest in natural gas pipelines. Yeah. Yeah. All right. right. You put the word out. Yeah. We'll see what comes back. Right. Michael, thank yeah, you. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Next on Rising. One scandal that's haunted Mayor Pete's campaign since the beginning, the circumstances surrounding the firing of South Bend, Indiana's first black police chief. TYT investigates managing editor Jonathan Larson and uncovered some brand new documents that conflict with the Buttigieg campaign's statements on this scandal. Jonathan's going to explain more when Rising continues.